This is the RPD podcast where we tell the real truth about the fake shit. Hi, everybody. I'm Amber, and today my fabulous co host is Alina Merle. She's the CEO and founder of Amy on Skincare, and she has such an impressive story um, to tell us about how she created this co uh, company. But before we get into that, I want to welcome you to the show, Alina. Hi, Amber. Thank you so much for having me. I'm like super happy to be here with you and uh, spend this time together. I'm super happy too. And by the way, we're going to get into this idea of icing a little bit later in the show and talk about icing and the benefits for um, the skin cryotherapy, if you will. Um, so I'm excited to talk about that because you've got a really cool product, which I feel like I haven't seen anywhere else. And we're going to be talking all about that. Um, but before, before we get into that, you know, you have a very unique story of how you came into um, becoming founding a skincare company. And I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind sharing that with us. Of course, of course. Um, so I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, uh, I live in New York. Uh, and uh, when I was 30 years old, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. So at the time I was partner in architectural interior design studio when I'm still on board. So I'm an architect by train. And uh, I always was in the design and art world. And uh, it's like, I cannot imagine my life without it. But uh, the idea to be sometimes like one day in skincare was uh, like never crossed my mind. Sure. So it's like, it was just like a um, different world for me. And I never had any like botox injections or like, like anything. It was kind of like different planet. So um and I was 30 years old, like hustler in New York, everything, just like so many things. You always, when you live in New York, you kind of have this uh, pressure and a very strong energy that you always need to do something. You need deliver, you need like everyone like doing something great. And you just like, hurry, hurry up. Yep. So it was just like, um, and I was young, 30. I never had anyone in my family who had a like cancer, breast cancer. And I had no, the gene, so... For me, it was completely like out of the blue. So how, how and, did you find out that you had this? So there's no history of breast cancer. So what what, what was it that, how'd you find out? I knew that something wrong, even uh, before I find out a small tumor on my chest. And um, I kind of, I'm not a big girl, so it was easy to find this, like something, <laughs> something weird here going on. But I... Um, everything uh, in my body, my chemicals, I guess, has changed. So my food behavior changed completely. I could not eat anything. I did not uh, wanted vegetables, like uh, fish, like whatever. I wanted to eat only almonds and uh, watermelon. And my boyfriend uh, at the time, uh, now he's my husband. So he was like uh, stressed every day. He running outside the New York looking where to buy fresh watermelon because wow. I could not eat anything and it was like really weird so we had a lot of jokes about it with my friends so I'm so weird but uh, actually my nutrition and oncologist when I was diagnosed they explained what's happened with my body so uh, to grow tumor especially for the young people uh, it's required it's growing so fast yeah because everything's so fast in your body um, and um, it requires sugar and the watermelon is a wow. sugar in water, the easiest way for tumor to, to get the, the food. But I also, to survive, I need nutrition. And uh, almonds is a, nuts is a great source of uh, nutrients for the, for the woman. So that's why uh, I knew that something wrong because um, my body told me, but I, at the wow. time... I mean, I would think that, you know, especially at 30, you've got a boyfriend. I mean, I, I don't mean to go there, but like that if I had all these weird food cravings, I'd think, oh boy, am I pregnant? Um, but but wow, your body was really signaling to you that something's not right here. So how long was it, you know, before you realized, hey, I need to go see a doctor and 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 get checked out? Um it crossed my mind when I when I had such a weird like food behavior and uh, I find out the tumor, but I thought like, eh, it's like, it's a, no, it everything is fine, all is good. It's just like let's continue work. I have no time for this. Right. And uh, we had a project in Mexico City. We all came there. My boyfriend, uh, my business partner, and um, I saw the dream. It's like really terrible, terrible dream that kind of like screaming to me, you need to take some actions. 
And uh, after this dream, I was so, so, so scared. I just uh, told everyone, so guys, I think I have like really a serious problem. I suspect that I have cancer. And uh, everyone was just like, what? <laughs> and um, and uh, I came to back to New York the next day and um, I did biopsy. And in a few days, um, I got resolved that it's a very aggressive cancer. It's growing very fast and I need to start chemo immediately. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I mean, at 30 years old, it feels like your life is just kind of beginning um, to get that <laughs> sort of a diagnosis with, with no history. Was that scary? I mean, that must've been really scary. What was that like for you? Yeah. And um, so um, at the time I was uh, in uh, New York, I had visa 01. Um, it's uh, like visa for talented people. So I really was focused to build my business. I had no like uh, family around me. I had no, my like circle it was new friends it was uh, my boyfriend and pretty much like uh, everything was just very unstable and I was yeah. just like like this is like the worst thing that could happen to you yeah. <laughs> in this situation but um I'm I don't know I, I guess for for something I did something good in my life and uh, I was really blessed with the people around me so and like uh, my my boyfriend now is my husband Alex. So he proposed me after I finished my chemo and double mastectomy and everything. Oh. And um, my partner in architectural practice Julian, uh, he's the, just like was like the best partner and became my best friend. So it's just uh, the people. I'm getting the chills, yeah, yeah. People is everything. It's uh, you have one family when you can't like pick where you will born or where or with whom, but you also have second family, the people you surround yourself and you care about and they care about you. And I believe I find this like second, very strong family. <laughs> I love that. You, you know, my, my, my family, my, my biological family also, uh, my parents are in Florida. Um, my sister's upstate. So I don't get to see them as much, but my, you know, chosen family, if you will, including my husband, they just absolutely keep me going. So you're right. You know, we are so blessed, um, to have those people and Hey, good reminder to everybody. You know, you, you brought up a good point about New York. New York is a go, go, go city, but you have to make time, you know, for those people that matter because, you know, look, you had it firsthand if something was to go wrong or even just to celebrate all of the things that go right in the world. You want a strong group. Um, you know, so so you find out that you have this diagnosis, you go through chemo, a double mastectomy. Um, what was it, you know, what was it that made you then decide, okay, I'm an architect and now I'm I'm going to go into skincare. Was there something missing there? Oh, it was uh, um, actually it was interesting things because um, uh, I had very strong chemo and my skin was uh, so, so yellow color, so fragile and dehydrated. I, I was like, really, um, it was not the best look. And uh, I think my oncologist, he felt like really so like uh, so bad for me. He had her daughter my age and yeah. he just uh, wanted to inspire me, you know, like to tell me something like good. He said like, you know what? You need to do something for your skin. Go to do facial, you know, like cryotherapy is like great. Just like mm -hmm. going and starting to like do something for yourself. And I said like, okay, so I guess I need to do something for myself. And um, I started to talk with her like woman who also had a cancer because I uh, attended like a couple of group to support other people sure, um yeah. because I'm and I know how for their woman it can be uh you're so fragile at this moment when you kind of you lose your identity you lose your beautiful like hair you lose your nails like you you does not look like uh, the woman you yeah. get used to be you kind of became invisible and I heard this story. I like. I, I don't want to share the sad story, but it's actually. I think it's a. It's a. It's a good example, um, of something uh, that we sometimes need to think about to remind us. Uh, in one of the group, I met the woman who came. Um, she had no cancer, but she had a young friend, girlfriend who had a cancer, and she rejected chemo and uh, treatment because she doesn't want to lose her identity and her hair. She was so scared that her boyfriend will leave her. And she was like, so in love with him. So, uh, she died and, uh, she just came to their group with, to share this story with other women. And it was just like completely transformed my mind because in my world it's just like, 
how you can uh, sacrifice your life, everything that you have just to please other people. It's yeah. just like, no, 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 fuck it. <laughs> no, no way. Yeah. So yeah. at this, after this, I decided, even my oncologist told me, you're so young, don't do double mastectomy. I said like, oh, 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 no, we will do double mastectomy and everything on top. And just, I never want to, my health is priority. Sure. I mean, that is a big, um, you know, without divulging too many details, I have a girlfriend who's same thing at 30 years old um, with no history of of breast cancer was was diagnosed here in New York with breast cancer. um, And, uh, you know, luckily now has been um, cancer free for over a year. But but that's that's a it's a hard it's a hard pill to swallow, um, literally and figuratively. Um, So so what was it like, you know, for other women, I feel like there's probably so many women who either know somebody who's had cancer or nobody, somebody who's going through it. What are some of the things that helped you in terms of your skincare during that time? Um, I was, um, I was very naive and I had no idea about the skincare, what I should use, what is uh, like beneficial for my skin or what is not, what should I believe? So I kind of starting to learn in a hard way because when my skin um, was uh, in a, in the worst condition, so I just went to the store and uh, like talk with the people, like saw this like beautiful marketing things, bought the serum for, I believe like, I don't know, $700. So like whatever that promised change everything in your life. And um, at this moment, I was so like fragile and vulnerable. So I would believe in like whatever you will tell me if it like, I think it, if you tell me it will help, I, I will buy it because I sure. want to be beautiful and I want to do just like, uh, yeah. And um, then I starting to realize that uh, it's actually, it's, uh, it's it's harmful for my skin. So all of this uh, ingredients, it's actually uh, potential can be the cancerogen or just like, like why, <laughs> why? Yeah. And uh, I also do not think, believe that it's fair to pay so much uh, money for something and feel guilty because I think you can spend this money for like to, to help someone to do something good and not to pay like big uh, companies this like, crazy amount of money so it's not like uh it's like everyone like uh of course like uh allowed to do whatever they want but i didn't feel it's like resonate with me so i didn't feel it fair so this is um and when uh, my oncologist told me about the cryotherapy and i started to look into this and i realized that people actually used skin icing for centuries in uh, different cultures and it was uh always around so and um we kind of we know that um, uh, interaction with the cold water or skin icing uh, increases production of mood elevating hormones and uh, neurotransmitters like uh, beta endorphins, uh, dopamine, uh, noradrenaline, and uh, that uh, can improve the symptoms of depression and anxiety by changing their chemicals in our wow. body and brain. So this kind of was a really fascinating with me as a ritual. So I starting to do my uh, own, like, let's say ice. So, and um, sometimes I just like, I did it with a cold tool that I always freeze. And I'm sorry, it's just like in New York, it's always some noise outside. Oh, that's okay. We're all good. I know we'll probably hear it over here too. Um, so, so you're, so you're, yeah, you were saying you would do it with a cold tool. Would you just do it with regular ice cubes? Uh, never, I never did uh, regular ice cubes because I know how uh, I have very sensitive, uh, fragile, dehydrated skin, super reactive, and uh, there, uh, the water has a like especially in New York had like pH like seven seven point five, so it's kind of uh-huh. like uh, harsh for your skin. So and there are our uh, ice cubes. It's like a frozen essence that actually designed to be frozen and be active uh, in a phase when it's uh, when ingredients is frozen. So our pH, it's uh, 4.5. It's very gentle and healing for your skin. So I wouldn't suggest anyone to um, interact or do skin icing just with water. It wow. really can be very harmful and dangerous and can do you more bad than good. Amazing. Because I, you know, so personally... I am not um, uh, somebody who has done a lot of skin icing, but I found, um, you know, when I learned about this product, so here I've I've got your, um, it's the Supreme Energy Ice and, you know, they're not frozen now, but you've created these um, little pods, which you put into the freezer. And then you've got these 
um, sort of bags that go along with them. So you can put it in the bag. Is that so it doesn't make a mess? Uh, no, I actually, so I love like uh, beautiful natural things. And I think yeah. it looks like so nice and sexy when you're doing skin icing in the morning. I do it, ev it every day, not just with our um, ice. So sometimes I throw like a different essence, just like doing their chamomile extracts, like whatever. I experiment a lot. Um, and uh, when you put it in this like small bag, it's uh, just like, it's not dripping. It's like very comfortable. Yeah. Spirit. Okay. But personally, I like to do it without it. I like to go like a little bit natural and messy and like, I, I have no problem with this. Got it now. Okay. So you, so skin icing, cause I, cause I, I feel like I've got, um, like I, uh, so many people now are, are, are talking about this, but you were the first company that I saw that actually created an essence that was designed to be frozen. Very interesting that you say that it's at the right pH, pH 4.5, which is better for your skin. Cause who knew that ice was maybe detrimental because of the pH. Um, and then what is the right way to use this? So when you're skin icing, is that something you do every morning? You said. I do it personally every morning because for me, it knows just, uh, um, I don't do it just for like to have like a perfect skin, but it's one of the reason, but, uh, also skin I do is it beautiful. Well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just had a facial at our spy at Rockefeller center. So, oh, you're <laughs> glowing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I, uh, also doing this for their, my mental health and for my emotional health, because I really, when I'm doing skin icing this couple of minutes, uh, I'm belong to myself. Yeah. I'm really fast, what I grateful for life in life. And um, I'm showing my gratitude and just thinking about the other thing that I never have time. And I think that uh, for me, this like small ritual just for a few minutes every day, uh, it's uh, bring me some, I would say maybe spiritual maturity when you, uh, you can train uh, and can control your mind. So yeah. focused more on the positive thoughts because we know that uh, the negative thoughts have great power and yeah. they are uh, actually more powerful than positive thoughts. And um, uh, it's crucial to train and discipline your mind to always see the amazing things in your life and be grateful. Um, Amen. Because, like, For sure. Yeah, the gratitude is a... I think it's not think I know that it's scientifically proven to boost our mood and improve our happiness. So we really need to train our mind, not just always be under control of the emotions. This right. is like how we grow, how we become more like spiritually mature. Just like the gym. I've started a meditation program at night, a sleep meditation. I'm not a meditator because I'm like, ah! but it's five minutes at night and it's these guided meditations. And boy, it is really, I, I, I feel like a lot of what they do is, is, is like you say, it's a training practice. You know, it's not um, just like going to the gym and building up your muscles. You have to kind of build up your mind, but by doing so, I'm hoping that you can kind of find like a little bit of inner peace and calm. Um, and everybody who I know meditates seems a lot calmer than I am. So I figured why not give it a shot? Um, getting back to these products. So, so when you were, when you were going through um, chemo or was it post chemo that you started face icing? Uh, it was absolutely post chemo. Okay. Uh, when I was um, already there, my treatment was behind me, and I just like come up with this like idea. I thought, oh, this would be like really cool. I love the idea of skin icing, and I I see that it like helped me and my body. So because yeah. I do it every morning, and uh, when I uh, next time, so my doctor he said like, oh, you you look good. So what are you starting to do? I said like, no, just like you know, nothing uh, big change. I just like uh, find something that make me very like balanced and, and happy my own happy. rituals and so uh, so yeah and so then how did you end up um you know going from from you know treatment finding something that you like to starting a skincare line I share their um kind of the idea with uh my very very good friend who is uh, very experienced in the skincare like he's an entrepreneur in the fitness and uh, um, beauty world and he just came from Germany uh, okay. when he had a good friend who owned their fact like manufacturing okay and he said like wow it's like it's really cool idea so we always wanted to do something together let's uh let's just uh do it you will be like it will be all yours so you need to study if you, if you want to do this but I like 
like I, I know how to actually have the great con contract uh, contacts with their uh, Germans because we develop our first five products in Germany okay. uh, based on European standards. And then we had a company who helped us to transfer the formulas here. So everything made in uh, USA, actually in New Jersey. So we have our manufacturing, our uh, packaging facility and fulfillment in a radius of 50 miles in New Jersey. So everything, I visit everyone for like one day and I can control everything and I can help uh, people if they have a questions and we need to solve something. So I mean, and that's great here. that you were, that you were formulating, uh, you know, that you created these formulations in Europe. We know that Europe um, has much stricter standards when it comes to ingredients, especially, you know, what can be included and what cannot be included. Um, so were you really looking for ingredients that were clean and safe? Um... Yes. And uh, I also, because um, I dedicate my life to their like new technology, because yeah. uh, with my diagnosis, if it's like happened to me like 50 years ago, I could not make it. So the treatment was not on the level where like it is right now. So right now, so many women have a, and men have a more chances to survive and live normal life. And for me, it was very important to uh, bring this biotech aspect and to use like uh, biotech ingredients like hyaluronic acid, squalane, peptides. I'm a big fan of peptides. I think it's like really amazing. And uh, combine them with um, I, um, our scientists, actually, it's interesting because uh, I'm an architect. I'm very particular with the wording. And um, a lot of brands, they position themselves as a natural natural brand. Right. And as a person, you, of course, it sounds good. You like, you believe in this. It's like nature, what, what's nature bad can do. But uh, um, our scientists explain me and I completely support and share uh, this position that it's not ethical to name it natural because no one ingredients come to the jar directly from the garden. Right. All ingredients going through a number of processing steps. So uh, ethically to name it natural derived ingredients and uh, other type of ingredients lab created or biotech ingredients. Got it. So, and uh, from this combination, the balance between these two worlds, this is where Amion is was born. Created. Now for people who have had, um, who, uh, you know, are concerned about hormone disruptors. Is this a line that is, you know, and of course, without making medical claims, you should always talk to your doctors first, but, you know, is this a line that you sort of created to be safe for people who have gone through chemo or might be, um, yeah, who've gone through chemo? Uh, for the people who um, overcome yeah. chemotherapy yeah. and on uh, the way to restore, rejuvenate their skin. And yeah. also, um, so our esthetician, uh, Shay, she's a transgender woman and okay. we work um, a lot with LGBTQ and transgender people community yeah. because uh, this is their um, community that, uh, in my opinion, underserved in uh, New York and the whole America. And it's uh, like very unfair sometimes yeah. and um, working a lot. We have, we, so our company diverse <laughs> we, very good. like and it's uh, make us i think very fun and cool um but um a lot of uh, transgender people they're on a hormone therapy yeah. and um so i was on a hormone therapy for the different reason but everyone everyone everybody is different so we react on this differently so we all deserve to have something like really powerful that works that affordable and this is clean so right. and and I think and, that, and like, that's not going to disrupt without the hormone disruptors, correct? No. Right. Okay, great. Um, so, um, so, okay. So you also now you've got, um, I've got two of the other products. You've got the calming serum. Um, I love that your creams come with a crystal. Why was that? Um, so I'm an architect. I really think that, um, functionality of course this is the first and the product needs to deliver what it says but yeah. also their like aesthetical aspect it's so important and when i see the holy cream every every morning so on my like bathroom it make me very very happy so yeah it's like what i want i want to be happy you want to be happy um you know you also mentioned that you are in um a spot you're equinox uh yeah we are uh, at uh, rockefeller center okay at i name it like kind of like um 
our first concept, um, like skincare laboratory, where we communicate with the people and build the bond and sharing our story and uh, skin icing, talking about the ingredients. And uh, we uh, have our small spa. It's like it's it's really small, so it's like I can't even say it's like a spa. But it's uh, we're growing and uh, showing like really cool, and uh, we're planning to have our even bigger location. So we're working on it. Well, very impressive to get into Equinox because that is a hard company to um, break into and be part of. I I happen to know from having other friends who are trying to work with them in other ways. So that's really speaks to your credibility that you are backed by such an incredible company. Um, You know, what would you say is next for Amion? Well, next for Amion, um, to build our community because right now uh, I would, I'm like really proud because I see the people reaction who come into us, who are hearing the story, who are testing our products. And uh, uh, sometimes they just like reach me directly and it's like, it's resonate with them. It's something, something like real, something that I can feel and they can feel. And I love this connection because I believe this is like the most important that we could have like this human touch. So yeah. for me, it's very important to stay uh, close to our community and to grow our community, make people healthy and happy, inspire them because uh, life is life is not easy. So we all have like different amount of problems. Sometimes we look like completely fine. Everything is great, but who knows what's happening in you? So it's very important to be kind because I think this is what we need after crazy 2022 kindness. It's like what we really can use in this world. And I want to grow Amion to be the most trustful brand in America. I really want to people trust us. Amazing. So, Amazing. So if people want to know more about Amion, where should they go? Um, they should come to amionskin.com or to our Instagram, amion.skin. Uh, Amazing. And I want to thank you so much, Alina, for being on with us today and for sharing your story. Um, it's inspiring. And I think you gave a lot of uh, of of hope to people out there, um, you know, whether or not they are dealing with um, whether they're cancer warriors, cancer survivors, or people who, um, you know, haven't had to deal with that. I think that this is clearly a great message for everybody of like hope and kindness. I love that you shared that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amber, to having me. And I just want to say that um, life provides you endless possibilities, but along with them uh, comes sometimes pain and obstacles like cancer or like other things. And uh, if you can't tolerate the experience, you can't be fully alive. So this is uh, what my cancer uh, was about, the journey of fully awakening and appreciating. So I can say in a weird way, I'm really grateful that this happened to me. So because it's, it made me a better person in a way. I mean, I wish for everybody that we could just have an ounce of your positivity and maybe that's the next thing you need to bottle up. <laughs> I will to our next product. So we're working on seven more new products. It's going painfully slowly because we develop uh, our five products for two years. Uh, Well, listen, they're uh, worth the wait. Um, And again, if you want to check this out, definitely go look at amyonskin.com. Beautiful products. Um, And if you have any questions that you want me to pass on to Alina or her team, I'm always happy to do that. You can email me at hello at Art Beauty Podcast. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Art Beauty Podcast. And as always, we will see you next Tuesday. Thanks, Alina. Thank you so much. Thank you.